Hey YouTube, and welcome to another episode. I'm Louie, and I'm here with Hannah Morris today. Hi, Hi Hannah, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Also really good, yeah. It's like to be here with you. Excellent. Um, we've actually got to do a fair bit of climbing together over the last few weeks. We, um, we went to Hang last week mm -hmm. and did some filming there. We did some filming at Climbing Hangar in Exeter before that. Um, so we've climbed together a little bit over the last couple of weeks, and today I'm very excited that I'm gonna show Hannah some cool tips and tricks to improve her climbing. So this is actually gonna be a two-part episode. Uh, in this part, which you can watch on the Catalyst YouTube, I'm gonna show Hannah some cool drills, we're gonna look at some movements and some techniques together, and generally practice and improve climbing on low and, e and mid-grade climbs. And then part two of the video, go and watch on Hannah Morris's channel. It's gonna be me helping Hannah work on projects at her limit, and we're gonna have like, a really good time just trying hard climbs together. So very exciting two-part episode, but part one starts now. All right, so um, the first thing I'd normally do in a lesson with a student is I'd want to just watch them climbing stuff for a while and get a sense of like what they're good at, what they're not so good at. We can skip that today though, because like oh, I said, we've no. climbed together quite a lot over the last couple of weeks and I've seen you climbing loads. Okay. And oh, good things that you should know about your climbing. You're oh. really strong. You're, I know you might not think you are, but oh, that's something else I want to talk about in a minute. Mm. Um, yeah, you are strong. Um, otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get away with doing basically everything statically the way you do. That requires a lot of strength. Yeah. Um, you're also, I think, really good with route reading. You, you find really, really good options, and you're really good at just trying really hard, which actually is more of a skill than people might realize. Um, the thing that I think we can massively improve, though, and I think you can probably see this coming, dynamic movement and using yeah. momentum when you're climbing. Yes. Obviously, this is great for me, because I love teaching dynamic movement. Everyone's seen me teaching dynamic movement before. And reasons that I think it would be really, really good to practice this is that it will just massively amplify the strength you already have. Mm -hmm. And I know this with my own climbing, that would it be fair to say you have a preference to move statically? <laughs> like, I've seen you dyno yeah. for stuff, but it's definitely not your preference. I think I've definitely identified in the last couple of years that I don't move dynamically, and I have tried to kind of yeah. challenge myself more by going for those kinds of moves. Yeah, good. But I definitely still find it's very rarely one fluid motion. I'll yeah. like pull up, and then go, it's, yeah. uh, it's in stages at the moment, so I need to find a way to kind of like find the, find yeah. the flow a little bit. There we go, well, that's so. what we're going to be doing today. Um, so, for to work on this, we're going to do some drills. Okay. Um, I've got a couple of good fun ones that we'll have a good time doing together. Okay. And then I've got some specific challenges that we'll go around doing. Um, but the first thing I wanted to talk about, because I learned this really powerfully for my own climbing, um, I think that the way you talk about your dynamic movement ability is holding you back a little bit at the moment. So, do you, uh, can you guess what I mean by that? Um, I think the way I talk about my dynamic climbing yeah. betrays how hesitant I feel about dynamic right. climbing. And, okay, so this is the thing that when we want to practice something, confidence, especially for dynamic movement, is yeah. really, really important. Yeah. And at the moment, you're like constantly saying these little phrases to yourself of, I don't move dynamically. I yeah. am a static climber. I can't do dynos. So challenge number one, <laughs> I'm afraid I'm going to be like really nitpicky. And every time I hear you say one of those like slightly, one of those phrases that would just drain your confidence a little bit. I'm just going to point it out. You want to, I was actually going to suggest, like, yeah, okay, let's do a little, like, I'll do them with you, okay. so that I'm not just, like, punishing you, making you do loads of push-ups. Okay. But every time I think, like, mm, I think that's a phrase that's just interrupting our progress. Challenge number one, we have to replace it with a phrase that's still true, mm. but a much more positive-sounding one. I.e., if you said, like, oh, I am rubbish at dynamic movement, I go, right, okay, well, let's do three push-ups, and also, let's think how we can rephrase that as something like, oh, I'm not yet really good at dynamic movement, which is much more positive than I am terrible at dynamic movement. Um, aside from that though, let's get started. Let's go. So I've got some fun drills for us to try. Oh. Okay. Um, let's start with this first one. And this is, all, all of these drills that we do are kind of just like challenges to make us move a certain way. And right. in this instance, teach us about timing and build confidence while we're doing it. So um, we're gonna start mega easy at first. Um, let's go for this, uh, this yellow one here. Okay. And uh, the challenge is, I call this exercise, the ghost. And you'll see why the in a ghost. sec. The ghost. The um, ghost. So, when we use momentum, our aim is to like throw our body away from the wall to create a little moment of weightlessness. Okay. Now, ah, you already talked about it, that often when you try and do dinos, you find yourself pulling in first and then letting yeah. go and snatching for it. Yeah. The equivalent would be, Okay, um, if I was throwing a ball in the air and I wanted it to have that moment of weightlessness at the top, 
pulling in first and then snatching is the equivalent of me holding it up at the top and then just dropping it. Mm -hmm. And if I do that, there is no moment of weightlessness. I'm just falling. Yeah. Whereas if I throw it up like that yeah. and then catch it, yeah, then there's that moment of weightlessness, the dead point that I want to create. Okay. So we're going to practice doing that over and over again. Imagine you are the ball being thrown ball. in the air. Yeah, you're the ball. Okay. Um, so on this yellow climb, and it's going to be mega easy for now, but this yeah. is really nice because then we can build confidence, we can do it with good quality. Then we'll start doing it on harder climbs. Uh, start on the handholds. Mm -hmm. Every time you want to go to a new handhold, mm -hmm. you have to throw your weight into the wall. Both hands have to hover off the wall for as long as possible. And then one hand goes to a new hold, the other hand goes back to where it was before. I have to go both hands off, and then I can catch that hold. Now I can move my feet up, both hands off, and catch again. Move the feet up if I want. Probably didn't want to. <laughs> both hands up, and both hands up again. And you can see I'm just like throwing my weight up, catching the holds, moving the feet when I want to. <laughs> it's almost too easy for you. Go on, carry on. Well, nice. I remember catch two different holds. Yeah, nice. Okay, feet up again. Nice and catch. Lovely. Oh, these two. Nice, very nice start, very, very nice. So I'm going to get us on a harder climb soon okay. because I think this climb being a little bit too easy means it's actually not challenging you enough that you're learning things that I was hoping you to. Okay. Um, so mostly it's the, I mean, you noticed every time you pulled in and I did it once, you can just stop and balance. Yeah. So <laughs> my challenge for you on this next lap, we're going to do this one again and there's a few things to add. So let me know if I'm going too fast and adding too much at once. Um, you, you can imagine where that balance point is, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't want you to hit that balance point this time, because then you'll just stop. I want you to try and throw your weight so you stop just short of that balance point and then slowly fall back out again, okay? Now, the other thing that I want you to focus on, um, again, this is more like a demonstration of how strong you are already. Um, when you're generating momentum, you're often coming to about here and then just going <clears throat> Yeah. like that. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing wrong. That'll just get you really, really strong. But I want you to really force yourself to perform the dynamic move a certain way. And really all it is, is every time you want to do one of those throws, bounce your hips off your heels and come up like that. Okay. So you should like return to that low straight arm position on every one of them. Yeah? Have a try that. Let's see how it looks. Nice, that was good. Yeah, and now feet up when you want. Almost, go on, carry on. This is why we're practicing it, this is great. Yeah, you can use both hands, that's it. Great, Hannah, really nice. This time though, the same difficulty of climb, all the holds are massive, so it's still appropriate for our warm up, but it's not a slab anymore. Okay. So I don't think you're gonna be able to just stop there on the footholds like you were before. So that means that whereas before you could, if you, as you were, throwing into that moment of weightlessness well enough, there's no time limit, you can just stop. Yeah. This time there will be a little bit of a time limit because there is no place that you can just balance. So I'll go for it first so we can see it again. And remember, when I uh, do that throw, one hand to a new hold, one hand back where it was. I do it a lot, I do it a lot. <laughs> but that is the only difference, it is just practice. Cool. Not bad, try for this one first. So hand back down, go on. Nice, and remember you can catch that one as well. Yeah, yeah, and now again. Yeah, that's it, now you're getting it. That was the hardest one by the way, all the others are easier. Nice, try that one again, see if you can do it for any longer. Nice, slightly better, okay, next one. Oh, you're going for one more. Lovely. Nice, Hannah. Feet up. Go on. You, if you're pumped, by the way, we can rest. <laughs> no, no, no rest. No rest. Rest is for weak people. Yes, that was great. You're getting it. You're really getting it. Really, really, really good. Okay, drill number two. So, crushed it on the first one. We've got now a better understanding of the timing involved in throwing our body weight into the wall. And we've built a load of confidence already. So great start, really good one to do while you're warming up, folks, is that drill we were just looking at. We call it the ghost exercise, because you're like, 
haunting like that over and over again. Um, now we're going to make it a little bit more complicated because I think this is more specific to like more modern star bouldering where instead of what we were just doing where you dyno up and then you catch and then you stop, yeah. more modern climbing movement often involves flow your body weight, catch something and then do like a couple of other things to stop your momentum moving around again. Yeah. So again, when it comes to practicing that stuff, either we can get on hard boulders where it's set with that intention, but that's not very accessible, it's not very appropriate for our warm-up, mm. or we can get on easy boulders and do a drill which forces us to move that way and challenges us with that sort of style of movement. Okay. So you might have seen this exercise before, I'm sure loads of people have done variations of this. Hannah, I want you to try and climb this V0 white climb here. Mm -hmm. You're going to do it four times. Once without touching anything with your right arm, okay. once without touching anything with your left arm, Okay. Once without touching anything with your right foot, yeah. and then once without touching anything with any limb. Okay. So I've done variations. You're okay on with this that? <laughs> when I've been injured. Ah, perfect. And I'm not okay. Okay with no limbs. Okay, good. You had. <laughs> <Just> okay. <twigs. laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was funny. Okay, no, it's obviously without the left leg. Um, a couple of things I want to be specific about, though, because okay. I've seen um, a lot of people will practice that one-handed drill. Yeah. Sometimes they just do it because they're injured and they're like, well, I want to climb, but so I just won't use my left hand. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time, though, people are trying to do it as a way of uh, improving dynamic movement, mm -hmm. but I often see them make two specific mistakes. I think I'll call them mistakes. Um, one would be, and see if you can spot this, because we've already talked about this one today, they'd get on and do... Yeah. What's the mistake there? Bicep abuse. Yeah, bicep abuse. <laughs> That's such a good way of putting it. Yeah, they're not throwing their weight in like we practiced. Mm -hmm. They're pulling in and then releasing and snatching, which is good for contact strength training and good for improving bicep strength, but not that helpful for actually improving our timing and our understanding of dynamic movement. Okay. So while we're doing this exercise, don't forget about all the stuff we were just practicing of really think about throwing your weight into position. Uh, the other mistake that I see them making is... Um, that with the arm behind the back. Okay. Even if they're doing the move well, there's two issues that I'd say with putting their arm behind their back. Usually, I know why people do it, it's to remind themselves not to use that arm. But downside number one is if you fall and land like this, that would suck. Don't, don't do that, folks. Um, the other thing though is that I was actually really, I've learned to be more specific with the way I explain this drill. I didn't say don't use that missing limb. I just said don't touch anything with it. Okay. So actually while you're doing this, I want you to experiment with learning how much momentum you can generate from that missing limb. Okay. So I'll go first. Uh, what, pick your favorite limb. Right. Well, okay, cool. No right arm. Okay. <laughs> I know, it's not the way you wanted that to go. <laughs> so, let me get some chalk on. In terms of fighting with the momentum, I can like stiffen and stop yeah. here. If I relax, whoa, <laughs> that happens. Okay. I don't necessarily want to do that and just peel off the wall and fall off. But I don't want to like fight with the momentum either like I did on that previous go. So I think the best one would be hop. And then we get to learn all kinds of cool <laughs> movement tricks. Okay, so I'll carry on from here. Uh, ooh. Nice. Loads of good moves. Where am I going to go next? Oh, I'm going to fall. Go on. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> okay. You want to try? Yeah, I'll go try. On then. No, right. As proven by me, it's fine to fall off. Look, I'm, oh, I'm even wearing the appropriate vest for it today. Oh, yeah. The fall off more cat. Throw and switch. Ooh, we'll get it on the next go. Try it again. <laughs> the, yeah, okay. Yeah, so this is where it, basically it's the same exercise as before with a whole load more complexity added in because it's not just throw up and catch, it's throw up, catch, do four other things. I'm just going to spot you from here so you don't land on a root setter. Go on. Yeah, oh, close. Smith. The One other thing we can do, and uh, I think I can see why this move is tricky. Um, this is something that I was talking about in oh, the Neil Gresham video of me working on dynamic movement with him. If you haven't watched it already, watch that, because that's a really good episode. Um, but um, if you get really good at this stuff, we've talked about the idea of um, good timing that goes into dynamic movement. Okay. If you really focus on getting your weight thrown into a body position, it then gives you time to do all of those extra things. So. I think you might spot the arrow when I show you what you're doing. You're starting here and then going, oh, and you see how little time I have to do everything. If I start a little bit lower and throw into it, right. you see how much more time okay. I have. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so close. And again, try it again, try it again. You're still going to have to do the foot switch, but it's much easier to start low and it's much easier to generate momentum. 
Oh, you're fighting with the momentum, though. <laughs> there. You know that bit where you're vibrating? <laughs> yeah, okay, th there was a little pause in the middle. It felt better. Yeah, it, it looked better. better. And what's really cool is, even before I said anything, you were jumping down going, ah, I know I can improve it. Go again. You're getting it, Hannah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, like a pro. Now do the next move. Oh, Lord. So I got the right foot up. Yeah. Oh, I went for that one. I went for that one. Yeah. And then you're going to, like, with the right arm, throw like that. Left hand comes over, and then you're going to have to quickly do left foot, right foot stop. Go on, throw with the right arm. Go on, you got it. Whoops! Oh, no! <laughs> hesitant to commit further up than I... Mm, yeah, that's natural, though. Like, I think if someone found it absolutely fine to just let go with both hands and throw themselves through the air at height, there's something wrong with them. <laughs> they shouldn't be fine with that. That's not normal. Yeah. Oh, wow, that was good. How did that feel? It felt more smooth. Yeah, it looked very smooth. What are you doing now? I'm trying to get that right foot up. Yeah. Yeah. Now stand up on that foot, throw with the left arm, and get ready to step through and catch. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was it. That was it. So good. Wow. Wow. Okay, brain. Here we go. Brain. You basically had it on the last try, so I think it's going to happen this time. Go on. Throw with the right arm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're still on. Well saved. Okay, what are you going to do now? I don't know. I think you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go on, go on, go on. So for this one, left foot up again. Go on, you can pop it up. I think throw left hand again and then stick your, your hips out Did that it? way. Yeah, yeah, left hand to that one. But make sure you stick your, hip, stick your hips backwards so that you don't bundle. Go on. Yeah, yeah, yeah! Okay, now what? Uh, get it, get it, get it, get it! Nice! Do you want to try and just do that move again a little bit more fluidly? Hop, uh, and... Oh, maybe you don't need to do the heel hook. It Go. was... I was using my leg. That's fine. That's good. Do the last move. You can put your right foot up as well if you want to. Oh, go on. Fantastic, Hannah. Oh, and the confidence it took to do that was okay. superb. Oh, even better. Okay. Look how good she's getting. She's getting so good. Okay. No, no thinking, only doing. Do that. So that was right foot, left foot, catch, switch feet. The less thinking, the better. Pop, pop. Oh, you did the harder version as well. Oh, I reckon get the volume, get the volume. Nice. Very nice. Okay, I'm wondering about an extension for this one now. Okay. What about, I'll try it first. Oh. Yeah, that's nice. Do you see what I did? Do you want to see again? Did you use this, I didn't. this orange? No, no, no. I, uh, and I also didn't grab that because uh, I thought, oh, when you did that, you yeah, saw it kind of like lined you up for that barn door. Okay. But instead, we can just keep it going. So I did the same first moves. I went step, catch, switch, but then I stepped onto this, stood up, and caught the black. Can we see again? Yeah. So good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoa, good save. <laughs> so um, when I do moves like this, I often think about um, the places that I'll be able to slow down and then speed up again. Okay. And there are like um, two places that I massively slow. Oh, hang on, wait. Is it three? No, it's two. It's two places. Can you spot the two body positions that I slow down in loads? When you stand up on this yeah, one? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, because I can slow I can slow down. Oh, when I stand up on this one? Yeah, that's the second one. Oh uh, yeah, I missed Yeah. The first. So the first one is just before that. I like do the run and then I slow right down here just as I'm getting that foot out. Okay. Then you speed up again into that next body position. Yeah? I often find it's really helpful because okay, yeah, I do need to think about some stuff, but I don't want to overthink the move. 
Yeah. Trying to think about the rhythm of the movement actually usually really helps me. So, okay, what am I doing there? I'm doing dun 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 dun. Do those noises help? Yeah, dun dun dun, like dun bottom. Yeah, it's now it's now a weird music lesson. <laughs> dun bum bum bottom. <laughs> Whoop! Ah, oh, you need to do the foot switch. Oh, unconfident thoughts. I'll do them as well. Well done, Hannah. <laughs> what was the thought? That I've made backwards progress on the oh, really? first catch, and now that that's, I don't know. Well, oh, hang on, because it took us a few tries to do that catch the first time. Mm. Us not being able to repeat it on demand is not the same as backwards progress. It took us like four or five tries to get it the first time. It's natural to not then be able to do it every single time on demand. Yeah. Okay. Yeah! Maybe. Oh, not bad. I want you to go right hand. Yeah, that way, <laughs> that way. So good. You wouldn't have to pull as hard if you throw further to the left. Oh! Oh! oh my God. God damn! That was the best one yet. So good. That was. Go on. Like very consciously. What were you thinking about? Slowed down. Yeah. And stuff. But this is what, you know, I've mentioned that stuff about, oh, it feels like you can control time and yeah. like do all these extra movements. You're getting it, you're getting it. Oh, good paddle one. Very good paddle one. I don't know why I always get like, yeah, I know, I've got my, my teaching wise staff back mage. again. I, I did this when I was teaching Neil as well. I feel, I feel wise. I don't, <laughs> yeah, I like it. Oh, yeah. I, oh, a phrase that um, I think really helped Neil when I was teaching him this stuff. Because trying it and being persistent is all well and good, but after a while you're like, I, am I getting closer? I mean, should I have done it already? Am I just gonna do this forever? So in all my experience teaching dynamic movement, and I teach dynamic movement a lot, what you did just there and for the last few attempts is exactly what it looks like when someone's about between five or 10 attempts away from smashing it every time. Oh, yes! Oh! What do you want to do differently? Uh, to be honest, it all happened so quickly. I'm not <laughs> sure. Oh! And it I looks so easy! Slowed down a little bit. Slowed down quite a lot. Slowed down loads on it. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you want to end in that position? No. <laughs> That was exactly on the prediction. I said, I think I said five attempts ago. Must be that brush stick. It's the, br the brush of wisdom. <laughs> Go, do, it, do it a few more times now. Just build some confidence with it. Oh my God. Dynamic master. Yeah. Do it again. Do it again. <laughs> I know, right? Every time suddenly. One more, one more, one more, one more. Oh, even not doing it perfectly. You still got it just then. Should we try another challenge? Yeah, let's go. You happy with that one? Let's ride the wave. Yeah, exactly. Okay, this one here. <laughs> Copy me again. That's it, just that. Almost. Tricky one, right? Oh, I'm gonna demonstrate the move two different ways. Okay. The things I want you to pay attention to are where do, I, where do I stand and where do I start the move from? And how does that affect how much time I have to get the toe hook in? It still works. Yeah. But I reckon... Nice. Oh yeah, okay. That, that was a lot more so time. So you've got... Yeah, so me starting... It's that same thing we're talking about of either like pulling and dropping, which is me starting here. My, my only option now is as soon as I leave the ground, I'm gonna start falling away from the wall. Uh -huh. Whereas starting here, I still get to do the same move, but I get loads of inward momentum added in as well. Close! Oh! Did you, I miss it? Your, your foot went <laughs> whoop! <Okay. laughs> oh! Over it again. Yes! Oh, so easy that time. What are you gonna do now? Release the toe and jump for the jug. Do a dynamic option. Go on. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very nice. Okay, now do that toe hook again. 
Bingo. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. Are you gonna top it? Go on. You gonna try? Go on, Hannah. Yeah. Last hold's mega. Yeah. Well Thank done, you so my much. gosh. Well, we're not done yet, because, um, no. folks, I hope you enjoyed it. Hannah, you were fantastic all the way through. I'm so, so impressed. Thank you. Um, like I was saying at various points during this session, um, doing the practice today clearly helped loads. But the main benefit for you and for anyone else who's watching and paying attention to the drills we did, just do them in your warm up. Just for like 10, 15 minutes every session, that's when it makes a massive difference. Um, aside from that though, folks, yeah, thank you for watching. Click below, like, subscribe, do all the healthy YouTube things. So if you want to see the follow up for this episode where Hannah and I work on some cool projects together, head over to Hannah Morris Bouldering, that's her YouTube channel, and you can watch the second part of this. So see you over on the other channel. Bye team, bye. bye.